First of all, thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate that. Um, my name is Edith, as, Christia, as, uh, as Brian said, I'm the founder and the CEO of Solo. And I, I will talk a little bit about Solo, just really, really glimpse that you will know why you're here. What are we doing? What are we trying to do? And why we are really, really bullish about those open source projects. So in general, Solo is working on taking a business and basically make it a digital a, a business. So kind of like the transformation to a digital uh, business. Um, there is a few things in Solo that is pretty unique in this ecosystem. The first one, which is really, really important, is the fact that honestly, and I will be very blunt, we have a lot of customers. That's really, really helpful because we saw it before. We saw, we took a lot of uh, a team and basically make them production in STO, in Envoy, with Gateway, with Cilium, and that's exactly what, what, what is very strong in us. The second thing that is very important is that we are a leader in this te technology leaders in that, conf in, in that uh, project. And the last one is that we also, not enough for us just to be the technical leaders, we also think that those projects are really, really um, challenging sometimes. And it's very, very important to us to be the education because it's not enough to give you the bit of bite that you were running there. It's also very important to us that we will know how to operate that. Um, that gave a lot, a lot of attention to some of the venture. Therefore, we are really, really, really well founded. Uh, we buy over a billion dollars and we had over $135 million that we took last summer. So that's kind of like in very, very high level. Now the question is, what are we trying to solve? So, you know, we are all here in KubeCon, which means that we're basically really passionate about Kubernetes, and that's where everything gets started. And that's what we like to call Cloud Native 1.0. That means that basically, you know, you started, you took a Kubernetes, it makes you really, really uh, more, more go very fast, uh, more efficient, container, microservices, but in the nutshell, it's also introduced quite a lot of problems. And we basically focusing on what's called Cloud Native 2.0. And Cloud Native 2.0 is basically the modernization of the API management. You know, it doesn't make any sense to change all your infrastructure to Kubernetes and then run this like legacy API gateway with Activated Cassandra cluster that it's by itself monolithic. The second thing that is really, really important is, you know, we're all about the clarity, we're all about eventually consistent, and therefore, we are not a big believer in a big UI that you're clicking and basically driving configuration in production. We way, way more believe in GitOps. We're really excited about, you know, now when your infrastructure, there is a lot of microservices everywhere. That also means that you, you don't really know all the time where the request is flying because you have a replication of each of those microservices. So observability is extremely extremely, extremely important problem to solve. Uh, zero trust, right? Everything right now is on the wire. And the question is that how do you make sure that it's safe? The last one is, you know, multi-cluster. A lot of people that we know started with one cluster, maybe two clusters, growing, growing, growing to hundreds of clusters and thousands of clusters. And the question is that how do you manage that, right? You can't manually go to each of the clusters and make sure that that works. The last and not least, you know, new technology like serverless and GraphQL. We think that it's really, really interesting technology, and it'll be very nice to see how it's going to work with the current technology that we have come up. So this is where Solo is focusing, right? So basically, we have a platform, blue platform. There is three uh, building blocks to this platform. One for Gateway, we build natively on top of STO. So it's basically taking the STO ingress and enhance that to a full-blown API Gateway. The second one is Blue, Get, uh, Blue, Blue Mesh, which is basically a distro of STO. And what it's doing, it's basically enhancing it for multi a multi-cluster uh, behavior, a search rotation, and other tools to help you be production uh, a, a successful. And the last one is Blue Network. And Blue Network is basically driving your CNI. So we're going to the lower level, driving your CNI. And basically what we're doing there is, is enhancing it. So if you have your own CNI, we're basically driving it. If you don't have a CNI, we personally will give you Cilium because we are a big believer in eBPF. And besides that, we're using a lot of the eBPF technology to enhance that. So again, really, really excited about eBPF. So we all technologies, I'm guessing. And if we all technologies, you probably all learned one-on-one. 
add class or networking, the several layers are a side model. So, you know, I like always to add another layer here, and that's the GraphQL layer, calling it multiplexer. And the reason is because if you're looking at those layers, the HTTP one is basically layer seven. But what we're doing with GraphQL is abstracting, right? HTTP. So it doesn't really make sense to put it on the same layer. So this is the OSI model. There is the, you know, the hard one one, and then there is all the others. Each of them is very, very nicely light to an open source project, right? Either the GraphQL or STR is taking everything from layer four to seven and Cilium layer three and four. I think that what we are doing is basically abstracting all of this and making it very, very easy to consume. So basically it's a platform that basically driving those open source projects. Um, so as I said, three building blocks, you don't have to use them all, right? You have a lot of people starting only with the match. There is a lot of people starting only with the gateway, but the beautiful, it's one platform. Kind of like, like in engineering, we took everything that is common between these things, everything that's related to, multi, you know, to the piping of the multi-cluster, everything that's related to um, you know, the, the UI, to the CLI, and basically created as a common, common component to all that platform. And now everything is basically a license that you can enable. So for instance, if you're starting with a gateway and you want to enhance to the mesh, it's just a license. You don't need to redeploy anything. You don't need to do anything. It's already there, which is pretty, pretty handy. Um, you being so really, really excited about, you know, we're a big believer that if you want to predict the future, just create this. And this is something that we worked on in the last year and a half. We're basically working, you know, with a lot of, like, for the last six years, we worked with a lot of our customers. And the last year and a half, we basically learned a lot from them. And we, oh, and we decided a year and a half ago to basically tackle the problem that people have that related to how they adopt those open source projects. And therefore, we, 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 we start working on how to make the project more cost efficient, more uh, uh, simple to operate, more simple to adopt, and even working on trying to improve their performance. While we were doing it, I was, uh, you know, we're doing it, we did it in Google, in Solo, we discovered that Google is doing the same thing in, 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 by themselves, and we decided to join uh, Forces eight months ago, and we just announced um, a months ago, Ambient, which is basically a mod in service in STO. So it's STO with a mod that is basically getting rid of the sidecar. Uh, it's helping you a lot with adoption because it's basically, you can adopt it um, a gradually. So if you're looking at what it is, basically, you know, there is there was some complexity or not complexity or a, a hiccup in actually um, adopting STO before. Um, and with the current sidecar, a, a, model and what we did is basically try to make it better. We did it by basically uh, separate layers four and layer seven. And again, there will be a lot of talk about it. So I'm really, really talking a high level. But in the natural, it's, costing, it's helping us with a lot of stuff. It's helping us with reducing the cost, right? So now you're not running all those proxy everywhere. You're running them one, you know, one proxy per uh, host and you have the waypoint, which is basically um, acting as a layer seven. Uh, we basically did some, you know, in solo, some of the of, of, of measurement of how much it will, it will help you. And there's quite a lot of reduction, and that's without us actually improving it and fine-tuning it. I think we can get even better. The second thing is simplicity of operation, and I think this is the biggest one. If you ask me what's big about Ambient is this, is the fact that it's easier to consume. No more init container, no more problem and upgrade, no more CVs upgrade, and so on. Now you don't have proxy everywhere. And again, we have a lot of talks here about that. So please go and, and, and listen to them because I think it's going way more detailed than I'm going. So in the natural with MB and what we tried to do and what I think we did very well is look, we can't change the, 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 the security. The security has to be at least as equivalent to the current project. But I think that what we achieve on top of it is reduced cost, is simplicity of operation and the improvement of performance. So I'm basically really, really believe that this is the future of STO. Though today, STO is uh, by default uh, uh, starting with a sidecar, I really, really believe that uh, in the future we will see that the default will be MDM. Now, by working this, we actually also already put it in our product. So we are working right now with our customer to make MDM production ready. I believe that in three months we will have customer running it in production already. And I think that in six months everybody will be able to run it in production. So I'm personally really, really excited about that. Um, 
So this is what we are doing, right? Basically, we have three building blocks, the glue network, the glue mesh, and the glue gateway. We have an add-on like glue portal and glue graph grill, but that's basically what we have. But there is a few things that is very, very uh, different in Solo and other, um, other, other, that I think that it's very important to highlight. So we are here in the conference, and as you know, there is a lot of projects out there, right? The real question is that when will we win? And we don't really know, right? I mean, there is new ones that are joining to the ecosystem every day. I think what Solo is really, really good at is recognize the winner one. So we're working on, you know, we from the get-go started with, with, with Kubernetes. We adopted Envoy six years ago. We had started with STO. There's people here in the, in the company that actually worked with STO before it was announced. Um, you know, we didn't see any good API gateway, so we built our own. And the last and not least, we are really, really bullish about Cilium. I think that uh, this is a very good CNI if you're not using one already. Uh, the second thing is that once we discover those projects that we believe will be the winners, we're really good in basically leading them. So, you know, we have a lot of people here that sitting in the, in the crowd that is basically the leaders of, uh, of those community. We are contributing to Envoy, to STO, and honestly anything that we need to. Um, we have two of the TOC members of the STO community um, there is five in total, six soon. And, uh, and the last one, as I said, is it, we, we continue, you know, working together with the community to basically make the project, the project better. But we're not stopping there, right? So we discover them, we becoming a leader there, and then we're pushing the boundary. So if you see what's special about Solo is that we always try to push the boundary. If this is the, you know, what everybody is selling today, right? What we calling blue mesh, right? It's basically something that I was talking about in 2018 before people knew what service mesh is. So that's something that, the, that we're working on and honestly got wrong for a long time until we fixed. So, but we knew that this is the problem that you guys will have. The second one is WebAssembly for extending of the Envoy. The third one is everything that related to eBPF, MBN, and so on. So we really, really important to us to, uh, to push the boundary. Now, I'm almost done, but one thing that, as I said, I think it's extremely unique for us is the fact that we already done it. We've done it with hundreds of customers. And that, I think, where is our strength. We, we successfully have a lot of companies that are running right now in production and then enhancing and, 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 and extending their environment drastically. But as I said, it's not, important. It's not enough. And what is really, really important is also to educate. So this is part of education, right? You will hear today a lot of people from the community is talking about education and teach you about all those projects. And besides that, and everything for free, you can come and basically try a solo workshop. It's all for free. You can learn a lot, have hands on, and then also can certify if you want. Again, zero money. So let me finish with kind of like a personal note. When I started the company, there weren't a lot of people in the company. It was me and a few engineers. So I was the person who was supposed to enable, and basically my job was to go and evangelist. And I think that the smartest thing that I ever did in Solo is understanding that Solo is not me. And this is very, very important. The minute I understood that Solo is not me, and it's not Christian, and it's not Lynn, but it's how amazing is the people who are working here. I mean, and you will see them all here, but honestly, they are all A++ technologies, and I'm so proud to be they're here and working with them. So they are all here, right? And I bring them here, as usual, to the front. Listen to them, talk to them, learn for them, and just tell us how we can help. So yeah, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoy the day and the rest of the conference.